the human male reproductive system. Despite having the same main function, the male reproductive system has quite different parts compared to the female. To start with, there are two ovoid testes in male humans. The testes lie in a pair of sacs, which are pouch-like extensions of their skin between the thighs. These are called the scrotal sacs. The development of the sperms requires a temperature around 1 to 8 degrees less than the body temperature, this means around 30 degrees Celsius. This is why the testes lie in the scrotal sacs outside the main body. There is a spermatic cord that contains blood vessels at the upper end of each testes. Leading from the end of the testes is a narrow, much coiled tube, the epididymis. The testes produces sperms. The sperms may then be stored in an inactive form in the epididymis before entering the vas deferens or sperm duct. The sperm duct from each side passes into the abdominal cavity. It loops over the ureta of that side and finally opens into the urethra. A gland called the seminal vesicle opens into each sperm duct. At the base of the urinary bladder, where the two sperm ducts join the urethra, is the prostate gland. Beneath the prostate gland is the cowper's gland. The seminal vesicle, the prostate, and the cowper's gland secrete a slippery fluid that mixes with the sperms called seminal fluid or semen. The semen is an important fluid because it contains nutrients and enzymes which serve to nourish and protect the sperms and activate them so that they begin to swim. The urethra is a tube that passes through the center of the penis to carry the semen to the exterior during ejaculation. The penis is an organ that contains erectile tissue with numerous blood spaces. When stimulated, the blood will fill the spaces and the penis will become erect and hard. Given enough stimulation, ejaculation or the release of the semen can happen. Urine and semen will not pass through the urethra at the same time. This is due to a circular band of involuntary muscle called the internal urethra sphincter at the base of the urinary bladder that blocks urine from coming out or flux of semen from coming in during ejaculation. The human sperm or spermatozoon has a head with a diameter of only about 2.5 micrometer. But exactly how small is a 2.5 micrometer? Compare it with the diameter of your hair, which is around 70 micrometer. Get the picture. You can fit 28 of these wiggly cells along the width of just a single hair. Coming towards the composition of the sperm head, it contains a large nucleus that carries a haploid set of chromosomes, little cytoplasm, and an acrosome. The acrosome is a sac containing enzymes. The human sperm also includes a middle piece containing mitochondria to provide energy for the activity of the sperm and, of course, a tail or flagellum to enable the sperm to swim towards the egg. The enzymes can break down part of the egg membranes to let the sperm penetrate during fertilization. Puberty. Puberty is the stage in the development of humans and other mammals when the sex organs mature and produce gametes for the first time. In humans, puberty takes place later in life, as compared to other mammals. Puberty begins at the age of about 12 years for boys. However, there has been a recent increase in hitting puberty at a younger age because of the artificial food given to our kids. Testosterone is the male sex hormone made by the testes that is increased during puberty and is responsible for secondary sex characteristics. How the female reproductive system works Ever wondered how and where humans are born? There are several complex mechanisms involved in this process. In the previous video, we talked about the male reproductive system. Now, we will talk about the female reproductive system, how the egg is produced and where it fertilizes. In the female, there are two ovoid shape ovaries attached to the dorsal body wall just below the kidneys. Eggs or ova develop inside the ovaries of the mature female human. Ovaries are also responsible for the production of estrogen and progesterone. It is thought that an overwhelming number of around 6 to 7 million potential cells are already present in a 20-week gestation fetus and then decline to 1 to 2 million at birth. This number continues to decline from 300,000 to 500,000 at puberty to less than 1,000 at an average age of menopause. Usually, only one egg is released every month. The ovaries take turns to release an egg. 
the egg cells divide through mitosis and then go through meiosis. Most of these cells are arrested at prophase 1 and may remain like this for up to 50 years. The egg is spherical with a diameter of about 110 to 120 micrometer. Now, compare this with the diameter of the human sperm head, which, as learned in the previous video, is only around 2.5 micrometer. The egg, like the sperm, also has a large nucleus and contains a haploid set of chromosomes. A lot of cytoplasm is present and may contain a small amount of yolk. The egg has a plasma membrane, which, in turn, is surrounded by an outer membrane called vitellin membrane. The ovary releases the ripe eggs or ova into the oviduct at certain times. There are two oviducts. Each oviduct, also called the fallopian tube, is a narrow muscular tube. It leads from the ovary to the uterus. The anterior portion of the oviduct has a funnel-shaped opening called infundibulum. Cilia on the inner lining helps move the egg to the uterus. The egg is fertilized in the oviduct. The uterus is another name for the womb. It is where the baby or fetus develops during pregnancy. It is pear-shaped, about 7.5 cm long. The uterus has thick muscular walls, which makes it easier to stretch as the baby grows. Its inner lining, the endometrium, is soft and smooth. Part of this lining is shed off every month during menstruation. The endometrium is richly supplied with blood vessels and is the place where the embryo is embedded after fertilization. At the lower narrow end or neck of the uterus is a circular ring of muscle known as the cervix. The outer portion of the uterus is a thin-walled birth canal or vagina. The opening of the vagina is the vulva. Semen is deposited in the vagina during intercourse. Previously, we learned about the female reproductive system, how the egg is produced and the fertilized location. In this video, we will talk more about puberty, menopause, and cervical cancer. Puberty. Puberty is a time of active growth in humans, during which the person changes from a child to an adult. During this time, the reproductive system begins to function properly. This begins at the age of about 10 to 13 for girls. Estrogen and progesterone are the sex hormones that are responsible for bringing about sex characteristics in young adults. Menopause. Menopause is the time in a woman's life when she gradually slows down and finally stops producing eggs, and her menstrual cycle halts completely. This usually takes place between the ages of 45 and 55. Cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in women all over the world. It is mostly caused by the oncovirus, the human papillomavirus, and is transmitted sexually. In most cases, it starts by causing warts or lesions in the cervix area. Whilst these abnormal cells are not themselves cancerous, they often tend to become cancerous, and, if left untreated, could develop into a cancerous tumor that could lead to death. Early diagnosis of these changes in the cervical cells can be achieved using a pap smear test. In this test, a few cells are removed from the cervix with a swab via the vagina. The cells are then stained and examined microscopically. Abnormal cells have a characteristic appearance. If detected, the cells can be removed with a laser. Vaccines can be taken to avoid getting a papillomavirus infection. If you want to know more about this virus or anything else related to it, let us know in the comments below. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.